Welcome to the Dominican Republic and this week's birding adventure. The Dominican Republic is the most visited tourist destination in the entire Caribbean and has been called the playground of the Caribbean. This place has it all. White sandy beaches, excellent snorkeling, diving, kite surfing, windsurfing and a host of other relaxation activities. But very few people realize that the Dominican Republic also happens to be one of the best places to go birding in the entire Caribbean. This place has got over 31 different endemic species and we're going in quest of the most critically endangered of them all, the Ridgeway's hawk. Let's go birding. Ponies. Did you see that bird? And this is the perfect habitat for this bird. Beautiful plumes. Look at the plumes on the neck and the head. Yeah! That's what I call birding. Awesome. That's our golden bird. Punta Cana Resort is situated on the eastern tip of the Dominican Republic on the island of Hispaniola. This island is the second largest island in the Caribbean and holds 31 different endemic bird species. Along with these 31 endemic species, it also holds a host of Caribbean endemics and Antillean endemics. We're here this week with WINGS leader Gavin Bieber. We're going to head out for a few days around Punta Cana to go and locate some of these endemic species and then we're going to make our way up further west to Los Haitises National Park to go look for our golden bird, the critically endangered Ridgeway's hawk. We're at Punta Cana Resort. I'm with WINGS leader Gavin Bieber, and we're gonna go hunting down some of the endemics of this part of the Dominican Republic. But I don't think this has ever been done before, endemic Segway birding. Let's go see what we can find, Gav. Let's go birding! This is a Hispaniolan lizard cuckoo right here. And this is one of about four different species of lizard cuckoos that are found on these Antillean islands. They're fairly large cuckoos. They've got a really big bill that's used to deal with their favorite prey item, which happens to be lizards, hence their name, lizard cuckoo. And they'll fly down swiftly, pick up a lizard, and then often fly up to a perch in a tree, and then they'll gulp it down. An awesome endemic of the Dominican Republic, the lizard cuckoo. Gav, okay, stop, 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 stop. Hispaniolan woodpecker. We've got two Hispaniolan woodpeckers over here. This, along with the palm chat, is the most common and widespread of the endemics here in the Dominican Republic, the Hispaniolan woodpecker. It's in the genus Melanopes, and without doubt is the most beautiful of all the Melanopes woodpeckers. Hispaniolan woodpeckers are a very important keystone species for the island because they are the only bird which excavates holes in trees. And these produce very important habitat for other birds and other creatures. Let's go see what else we can get. So Stolid Flycatcher provides an excellent example of one of the biogeographical plays that occurs here in the Greater Antilles. Birds like Stolid Flycatcher or Vervain Hummingbird tend to occur here on Hispaniola and in Jamaica. And birds like Lasagra's Flycatcher, which is closely related to Stolid Flycatcher, occurs in Cuba and the Bahamas. And that's because historically, those two different island groups were much closer together. So the Cuban and Bahaman birds uh, share an affinity, and the Jamaican and Hispaniolan birds share an affinity. All right, so I'm getting great views of this stolid flycatcher. What I'm using on my binoculars here, Gavin, are eye shields. They're a great little product. They just fit onto any pair of binoculars very easily. And what they do when you're birding with sunlight like this coming on one side of your face is that they reduce lens flare coming in from the sunlight on the side of your glasses. And also when it was windy earlier, they stop sand and dust from getting in your, in your eyes and affecting the lenses when you're actually birding. So, great product, very easy to use, and it certainly enhances 
go boating experience. Yeah, it's a great idea. Oh, there's a Toby calling over here somewhere. So this is broad-billed Toby, the common lowland species of Toby found in Hispaniola. Notice the really dark eyes. The highland species in the Dominican Republic tends to have white eyes, the narrow-billed Toby. That's, that's, narrow yeah. that's one way to tell the two apart. And it does actually have a broader base bill too, which you can see sometimes from some angles. This is your first Toby? It is my first toady. Thank oh, you so fantastic. much, man. Absolutely beautiful. Now, it's quite a small family. There's about five toadies, right? That's right. Exactly okay. right. There's five species of toadies. They're endemic to the Caribbean now, but historically, they were actually much more widespread. Well, we're doing pretty good. I mean, ah, I think we've got a... four endemics in, what, like 15 minutes? I know. I think, that's pretty good. I think birding by Segway might be the way to go. <laughs> All right. No le pegue, abusador. Oh, here you go. If you look up, the uh, the most common endemic in uh, the Hispaniola, the palm chat. There's a whole bunch of them up there on a nest. They're a very odd bird. They're actually the sole member of their family, the family is Dulidae. Uh, Hispaniola is the only place that you can see them or they've ever been seen. They've never been vagrants on any of the other islands. But this communal nest is it's a lot like monk parakeet nests, really. They, they tend it year round, they actually roost in it. There's uh, extended family groups and then non-related birds that use the same nest. And they carry just ridiculously large sticks up to those nests, sometimes four or five times the length of their body. So it's really neat. How many birds will be in a nest like this? Uh, I've seen upwards of 30 or 40 individuals seemingly using one actual nest. So tell us what we've got here, Gav. Oh, well, this is one of the prettiest birds in the Dominican Republic, uh, the Oriole. Black cowled oriole, or if you follow new taxonomy, Hispaniolan oriole. It's recently been split, making this the island's 31st endemic. It's a gorgeous bird, black, bright yellow. It's actually undergoing some population decline here in the Dominican Republic due to changes in landscape use patterns and uh, possible uh, increase in parasitism by shiny cowbirds. I think for bird watchers, there are several interesting things to come to Punta Cana Resort and Club. First of all, where your room is, immediately nature begins. Second, tell me how many places have so much abundance of modern nature, only two hours away from Miami or Charlotte or three hours from New York or only seven hours from Europe. So it's easy access with comfort. Why don't you come down to the Dominican Republic to Punta Cana Resort and Club and do some Segway birding for yourselves. This Birding from the Edge segment is brought to you by Nikon, manufacturers of the Edge line of optics. Now for all us adrenaline junkies out there, there's nothing better than after a good day's birding to grab your kite and your board and do a bit of kite surfing. This is Birding from the Edge. That is truly burning from the edge. Vamos a observar aves. Let's go birding. This is Los Haitises National Park, the last stronghold of the Ridgeway's hawk. Los Haitises means little hills, and this is exactly the habitat type that Ridgeway's hawk prefers in this area. These little hills are on limestone casts and they're called magotes in Spanish. And these little hills hold these nice palm trees in which Ridgeway's hawk like to build their nests and lay their eggs. They often build their nests right on top of palm chat nests. And we've got a nest right here. We're with Jorge Broca from the Hispaniolan Ornithological Society. And he's gonna take us in to hopefully get a look at these beautiful hawks. I am super excited because this is arguably the world's most critically endangered raptor right here in the Dominican Republic. This is gonna be awesome. We're perched right on the rim of one of these magotes or limestone cast hills. 
we're going to make our way down this narrow path and try and get to a position where we can look down into this Ridgeway's hawk's nest. I'm so excited, this is going to be cool. See, yes, you can two little nestlings. Exactly. No parent birds though, just the two little nestlings. Yeah, but they look at it in the cecropia, you have the parents watching us and protecting the little children. Oh, in the cecropia to the left? Yeah. Exactly. Beautiful. Ridgeway's hawk, awesome. These little nestlings are about two to three weeks old. You can see the way they're preening, stretching, walking around the nest. It's quite amazing because when you look at the adults, they're really agile predators, but they're pretty clumsy when they're young. Look at this little young one stretching its little wings out, thinking that it can fly already. Although not very tasteful, these youngsters are also born with the instinct to defecate outside of the nest. There's another bird coming, that's the male, right? Yeah, yeah, Flying yeah, yeah. in his circle, he's got something in his bill. Oh my. He is flying in, it looks like he's got a snake or a lizard, he's got a snake. He's got a snake, snake in his bill, he's coming snake. into the tree. Yeah. Oh my gosh, look at that. Yeah. Look at the female, he's coming also. Oh my goodness, that is beautiful. I want to have a look through these Nikon binoculars. Have a look at that. See the difference. Beautiful, huh? Yeah, they're amazing. One of the most endangered raptors in the world. One of the world's rarest birds right here, Ridgeway's hawk. There are only approximately 250 of these birds left on planet Earth. And in fact, two or three years ago, the numbers were down to as low as probably about 150, 160 birds, but they've had a lot of recent breeding success thanks to the protection afforded them by the Peregrine Fund and the Hispaniolan Ornithological Society. Ridgeway's hawk at the nest with Jorge Broca from the Hispaniolan Ornithological Society. Unbelievable. We had the male come fly in, bring a snake, what a spectacular bird, our golden bird, Ridgeway's hawk. After great views of the young nestlings, we then headed off to a second nest, which Jorge wanted to monitor, since he had just taken a nestling from this particular nest to Punta Cana. The nest behind me here is a perfect illustration of the threats that face this critically endangered bird. In this nest, there were three nestlings, and unfortunately, one of these nestlings was stoned to death by a local kid from this area. So education of the local population here that these birds are an asset to this area is very, very important. One of the biggest things of this project is educational purpose because we are inside of the national park, but they also, we have a main population in the buffer zone of Los Aitises National Park. And that is sometimes a problem to have the people, the people in Dominican Republic don't like so much raptors because raptors eat meat and sometimes the people think they eat chickens. And here we have a pretty much culture about to raising chickens and that is a biggest problem for all the raptors, especially for our critical endangered species, Ridgeway hog. And thank you to all the people around Los Aitises and also from different parts of the country. We stopped that and we saved the last remaining population of the Ridgeway hog here. This is an area where rhinoceros iguana like to hang out and bask in the sun in the early mornings. We're going to set up our trusty bird cam here and see if we can get any images. Santo Domingo. <laughs> Whilst birding around Punta Cana, you might be lucky enough to come across this fascinating reptile, the rhinoceros iguana, one of only two endemic terrestrial iguanas found on the island. They look exactly like rhinoceroses. If you look closely at them, you can see the males have these big jowls around their jaws, really big heads, and they've got horns on top of their heads. 
Look at the size of these iguanas. They are huge. I mean, this guy is nearly four foot long, maybe four to five foot long. And look how bulky they are. They've got these really bulky tails. You can see the spine for protection on the back. You see, he's gonna whip his tail around as a defense mechanism if something gets close to him. A fascinating reptile of the island of Dominican Republic, the rhinoceros iguana. Well, yesterday we had an excellent opportunity to see Ridgeway's hawk in the wild in Los Haitises National Park. And today we're back at Punta Cana with Jorge and Gavin and we're going now to see one of the nestlings, which we got from the very nest we saw yesterday, released here on Punta Cana. Let's go get a closer look. We've just arrived at the release site for these Ridgeways hawk. This blind behind me has been set up by the Hispaniola Ornithological Society in cooperation with Punta Cana Resort. And we're being a little bit quiet here because they just released five birds a few days ago. So these birds are getting accustomed to their surroundings and we're trying to view them and monitor them from a distance. This hacking process is very intense. These birds have to get acclimatized and they have to be released fairly slowly into their new surroundings. We're getting amazing views right now of one of the nestlings whose nest we saw yesterday in Los Haitises National Park. Now, our experience yesterday with the Ridgeways hawks in Los Aitises was uh, amazing and, and very encouraging to see the birds being relocated uh, out onto the eastern side of the island where they occurred historically. Uh, the, the park, Los Aitises National Park, is uh, having issues with encroachment of farmers. Uh, there's a, a lot of habitat degradation going on. Uh, the population of hawks is, is having problems. Uh, and it's very encouraging to know that they are trying to create other areas where that hawk can thrive thus uh, helping the species uh, on a global level. Jorge, tell us a little bit about why you chose this site as a release site for these Ridgeways hawks. We chose this site after we did a research of the area and knowing it's a historical place for the birds. Most important thing is it is protected inside of a private property. Thank you to Punta Cana, we can do this here. Well, that's wonderful. One of the world's most critically endangered hawks right here at Punta Cana. Three birds released last year and five birds released just a few days ago right here at Punta Cana. This is gonna be great establishing a core nucleus population where hopefully in three to four years time, these birds will be breeding here again in this part of the Dominican Republic. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917 and Punta Cana Resort and Club, the Caribbean's premier golf and beach resort destination. Well, last year in about January, uh, I received an email from my supervisor, from, from our president of our company, who had received a presentation uh, depicting the plight of the Ridgeways hawk that showed that it was being uh, systematically eliminated. There was down to 200 individuals in the entire country. And he said to me, why don't we see if we can introduce it in Punta Cana? You know, obviously no one would try and hunt it in Punta Cana because everyone lives from tourism. When we looked into it, we found that the bird would, had actually historically occurred in Punta Cana and that it was a, a decent idea to try and reintroduce in different areas. And so that's how it started literally a year and a half ago. The project has been fairly successful. It's gotten a lot of attention for the Ridgeways Hawk here in the Dominican Republic, which is important. You know, Punta Cana Resort and Club is a pretty high profile company. And so to be interacting and having a project related to these Ridgeways Hawks is really kind of a high profile activity for these Hawks, which really hadn't gotten a lot of attention previously. I'm so glad because for example, my grandchildren came and they came to see then the other day and watch them, they were thrilled. And now we're expanding the uh, program. And uh, I think this is the first that will be important because that's moving other uh, companies of the Dominican Republic to assume that type of responsibility in different parts of the country. And I think that's the most important part because we could try to do as much as we can, but it will never be enough. But if many different companies 
take the responsibility and start doing the same thing, then we have a huge opportunity to protect endangered species of the Dominican Republic. They're important because pre preserving biodiversity and unique species is important, not just for the local people, but for the planet. It's a similar hawk to, say, red-shouldered hawk or broad-winged hawk, but it's uh, actually more colorful than either of those species. And it's made a living for many hundreds of thousands of years here on the Dominican Republic. It'd be a shame to lose it. What we have to have is a little bit of conscience to do things properly. We don't have to go around with a sign over here, I'm an environmentalist. I believe that we have to have this conscience and treat the surrounding, the environment, the same way that we would like and other people to treat us personally. Punta Cana Resort and Club is not only the best place to spend a vacation in the Caribbean, but Punta Cana also sets an example to other companies on how to conduct tourism responsibly by supporting conservation projects like the Ridgeway's Hawk Project, recycling their waste and using water sustainably. Never been before